right? So I'm really excited about this. I don't know if you've noticed, but it looks like I've managed to figure out how to record only a portion of my screen. Don't know how it took me this long to figure it out, but look at that. All you now see, hopefully, is the thing that is, well, what we're working on, not the extra stuff. So that means this is good. Okay, so where am I? I have no idea how this is going to do when it comes to aspect ratio. I'll deal with that problem in future. So in this case now, we're going to look at topic 7, magnetism. It's all about magnets, funnily enough. Let's get started. So over here, we have a question saying, which of the following is true regarding the magnetic fields? Okay, fine. Let's have a look. The spacing between the field lines represent the strength of the field. Okay. The magnetic field vector is tangent to the field lines. Whatever that means. Magnetic field lines formed closed loops. Okay, so what are we talking about here? So in this case, the spacing does represent the strength. So here is an example right here. You can see that these are close together, so it is very strong. These are far away from each other, so that's pretty weak. So this is correct. The field vector is tangent to the field lines. Now, vector is the direction, the arrow. The line is, of course, the line that we're following. Now, here's the example right here, the arrow. This is tangential to this line. It's a curved line. At any point, it is a tangent. A bit like when you did some circular motion stuff when you were doing mechanics. You're talking about tangential speeds and stuff like this. So this is also true. It is tangential to the field line. No matter where you are, it will make a straight line going like that, even though it curves. So whenever you stop, it will be a bunch of arrows. And this is closed loops. Yes, you will make a closed loop over here. Eventually, it will go to a closed loop from one end to the other end. So this is good. So all three of these would be correct. So I've butchered question two. Let me just fix that up. Oh, made it even worse. Oh, there we go. Okay, so question two. The figure below shows this label. Which label is it the strongest? And I actually just gave it away, didn't I? Um, one and three are the strongest. They're close to the poles. The strongest at the poles. Weakest would be two and four. So at the poles, the magnetic field and a magnet will be the strongest. Where are we? One and three, the answer would be D in this case. Okay, very nice. Let's move on. Let's check this out. Which of the following diagrams is the correct representation of the field? Okay, let's have a look. Um, what are we doing? That is terrible. That is terrible. That is looking good. That is the wrong way. The arrows are the wrong way. And what the heck is that supposed to be? So, to be honest, this, this kind of gives it away. Well, you know, it is D. Uh, so that's fine. I actually noticed that I missed the 5 here. Just be careful. This is talking about around the bar magnet. So it's asking about the field being strongest around the bar magnet, not inside. Actually, the field inside, the solenoid and the magnets are probably going to be the strongest. Most of the lines will pass through here. So we're talking about outside space. Uh, just seen the 5 there. Okay, where am I now? I have done this one. This has been cancelled. Very good. And let's look at here. We're going to start using the right hand rule. And this is where I'm going to draw my uh, professional hands. I have got a lot of practice on this. So let's see. An electron is moving to the right with a constant velocity. And what's going to happen? Okay, first of all, the right hand rule. And then you have an electron which is the opposite of the positive charge. So we could use a left hand. Uh, if you want to just remember the right hand, this is my thumb. That's my index finger, and this is my middle finger. And these are my two extra fingers that I do not need right now. That's my hands. I told you I was good at this. Look at that. That's my hand. No idea what that's supposed to be. There's my nails. Okay. V is here. This is my V, and when it comes to current carrying wires, that is also my current. So that's my V. That's the magnetic field, each case, B. No matter what, that will be my B. This is the direction of the force, the direction he will move in. But this is my right hand. This is my right hand. Right hand. This is for positive charges. However, if it's a left hand, you can use the same hand, by the way, if some of you uh, want to just keep using one hand rather than the other. Use it and then just take the opposite. Otherwise, if you'd like to use your left hand instead, you can use your left hand. This is my thumb. That's my first finger. My second finger, which is very long for some reason. And this is clearly, I'm not used to drawing a left hand, as you can see. This is what we will use for the electron. Force is here, the uh, B is that way, and the V is that way. According to this, what I can see now is my thumb will be pointing to the right, my index finger will be pointing up, and I will see that uh, my middle finger is going to kind of be pointing into the page, right? So if I was to draw it, that's my middle finger, that's my other two fingers. I'm holding my hand in front of me, something like this. 
So that's the that's the hair on my hand. Maybe I've got some hair on my knuckles. And that's the first finger, other finger, and my index finger. I can see it will be going into the page. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip here when you're doing this. You have actually, if you're going to play a guessing game, you have actually got two options to choose from, not four. So I'm going to pick into the page. But now look at this. Check this out. If the field is going up, it cannot be going up or down. These two are cancelled. If the V is going to the right, it cannot be right or left because the V is going that way, cancelled. There are only two options, either in or out. In is the cross, out is the dot. I explained this in the previous lesson video. Okay, I can guess from two. Straight away, top and bottom, cancelled because the V, this is B is going up. I can guess between C and D. Now let's check this one out here, question number six. Uh, we've got to have this uh, proton entering with this speed and this is a magnetic field strength. And what is the magnitude and direction of the field strength? Um, what we're going to do now, first of all, we can check out the direction. Looking at the direction over here, you can see it's going to the right. Remember what I said above here. If it's going to the right, I cannot be going to the right or left. And then if it's B is going into the fuel, it cannot be in or out. Well, actually, according to the options here, there are only two choices, up or down. So now we're going to have to use our right hand. So let's draw the right hand. We have my B, my V, sorry, let's start with the proton. V is going to the right, thumb is going to the right, and I have my index finger kind of going into the page and I can see that my middle finger now is pointing upwards and then my next two fingers which I do not need so I'll curl them over and there we go very nice so that is going into the page this is going to the right my force is going upwards so now I know it is upwards I've cancelled B and I cancelled D now I need to go ahead and calculate this so what I can do is I can use my formula uh, which I have is QVB over here, F equals QVB. We know the charge of a proton, that's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, multiplied by V, which is 3 times 10 to the 5, multiplied by the field, which is 2.5. Multiply them together and you should get 1.2 times 10 to the minus 13. A would be the answer. So looking at this one here, a stationary positive charge is located here at this magnetic field. Now, look at that, stationary. It is not moving. A charge has to be moving through the field. I must have a charge, a speed, and a field. I have a charge and a field, but no movement, no speed. There is no force, no need to calculate anything over here. Okay, so moving on to the next question over here, we have the force on a charged particle. And what we're going to do is find out the angle. So no problem. So this is saying maximum of what angle? So that's easy because we know that it's going to be sine of 90. Why is it sine of 90? Because sine of 90 is 1. And the full formula, by the way, is QVB sine theta. It's a cross product here. QVB sine theta. Sine of 90 because this is going to the right and that's going in. These are perpendicular to each other, so I, I ignored the sine. So it's going to be sine 90, which is equal to 1. Sine of 0 would be 0. So moving on to the next question, we have an electron moving with this speed in this field. Okay, so we're thinking about QVB again. So I would do my F equals QVB sine theta, but you might realize, hold on a second, what's this? Parallel, very sneaky. Parallel means my V is going to the right and my B is going to the right. The angle between the B and the V is zero. I'll be doing sine of zero, and as you know, sine of zero is zero, like I, what I just said a few seconds ago. So, basically meaning, don't need to calculate anything. It will directly be zero. All right. Cancelling these questions, because they're not going to come in your exams, so we'll skip that. And now we're looking at an electron moving in a circular orbit with a radius. Now, we did create this formula. I'm not sure if you are required to actually create this formula, but if you realize that this is the formula that is r equals mv over qb actually it wasn't that hard of a formula to make to be fair all we did was we did the centripetal force uh, which was uh, if you remember from circular motion mv squared over r because f equals ma a is v squared over r and we set that equal to qvb which is the, the force the magnetic force 
and we cancelled out the V, we cancelled out that, and we rearranged the get R. That's literally all we did. Okay, not important right now, to be honest. And what is important is solving the question. We are trying to find the V, so you can rearrange to get the V, or I can just use shift solve. It doesn't really matter. So what I can do is, let's have a look. An electron's in my charge, I know it already. The radius is two millimeters, and you have the field, and it's perpendicular, which is good, and you want to find the speed. Okay, so 0 0.002, I should have just wrote two times 10 to the minus three. Remember, milli is not good. Equals. Uh, M, the mass of an electron. The mass of an electron, if my memory serves me correct, is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. I hope that's right. Uh, you can check on the front page. You'll get the... It's given to you. You don't need to memorize it. Multiplied by B. So the B is here, 0 0.5. Divide that now by the charge and the B. Why did I write 0 0.5? That is a mistake. That is wrong. It's multiplied by V. There is my V. That's why I should have probably written it there. What is my V? I'm trying to find it, obviously. I knew that. Okay, Q is the charge. Q, of course, we know the charge of the electron. This is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Multiply that by the B. There is the B here, 0 0.5. Shift solve, get your answer for V, and you should get 1.76 times 10 to the 8. So now, as electrons moving in a circular orbit, what is the final radius if I double the field? If I double the field, well, look at this. So basically, I can, like I've done before, set everything to 1 except the thing I'm changing. So the mass can be 1, the V can be 1, divided by the Q, make it 1, I don't care. Multiply by, I'm doubling the B, 2. That becomes 1 over 2, which is a half. 1 over 2 is the same as R over 2. R times 1 over 2. R times 1 is R divided by 2. It's R over 2, just in case you didn't know. Okay, question 14. We have a charged particle, and it is in a circular path, and it's been traveling twice as fast. What happens? The radius, look at that. Instead of doing this, I'll do 1 times 2 divided by 1 times 1. I make that 2 directly proportional. Doubling the speed will double the radius. So I'm looking for twice the radius. There we go, twice the radius. A particle uh, carrying a charge over here travels in a circular path. If it carries 2e, so basically I have doubled the charge. And over here, 1 times 1 divided by 2 times 1. That's 1 over 2, right? I'll set everything to 1. 1 times 1 divided by q, I will make it 2 times. I'll keep the b as 1. 1 over 2 again. That becomes half the radius. Now, actually, this kind of makes sense, to be fair. So the idea is the force is pulling this thing in. Um, a particle is being pulled to the side. That's what's actually happening. This is my radius I'm creating. A bigger mass will be harder to pull, harder to turn. It's like taking a big bus and trying to turn a bus. And if you have a small car, it's easier to turn a small car. That's why people don't race in buses. They race in small cars. So that makes sense. If it's faster, of course you will travel more distance as you're turning. If you travel more distance as you're turning, yes, your radius will take longer because you're moving faster, obviously, meters per second, right? So you will be going faster, so it'll take a, you'll travel more distance by the time you reach the, the turning point, whatever you're doing. And look at the charge. Increasing the charge means the force is stronger, so it'll pull it in quicker. There'll be a stronger magnetic force. Increasing the strength of the field will also increase the force. It will pull it in quicker. So that makes sense. This is the logical way. This is the mathematical way of doing it, using the formula. So this does make sense. Okay, so we figured that out. I went off on a tangent there. I'm sorry. So let's check this next one. Now we have a current in a wire. Current carrying a wire. So no problem. As soon as I see a current carrying wire, I'm thinking lib. F equals lib sine theta l i b that is not lib let me try that again f equals lib sine theta okay now what do we have here we have the length of the wire we have the current of the wire we have the field we just need to find the force we've got the angle as well make sure your calculator again degrees and then you will get your answer uh, where are we? L is 7 centimeters that's not good 0 0.07 that's better multiplied by 4.2 and I'm going to multiply that by 4.25. 4.25 times, oh, this is ridiculous, sine 52. You know what, I'm just going to continue. Yes, 
solve that. I'm sure you'll be able to do that. If you solve that, you will get your final answer of 0 0.98. Okay, good. And what's happening here in the next one? We have this wire carrying this current and the perpendicular, that's good. What is the magnitude of the field? So we'll just use the lib again. And I can ignore the sine theta because sine 90 is one, right? So F equals lib. I'm needing the B. So I have the force of 0 0.06. Of course, it's good to know what the units are so you'll understand what each thing will represent. The current is amps, distance is meters, force is newtons, B is Tesla. Make sure you revise these simple things because you can get confused and sometimes you'll put the numbers in the wrong place. Where are we? L, 0 0.2 multiplied by the current, 15 multiplied by, what's this B, what I need? I'll shift solve or I can rearrange the formula, whatever. If you do this, you should get 0 0.02. So that will be my answer. So a wire carries a current towards the top of the page. What is the direction of the force? Okay, this is where my trick earlier comes into play. If that's in, it cannot be in or out. I've cancelled that. If that's going up, it cannot be up or down. I've cancelled that. I have two options, left or right. Let's see. Uh, the wire, the thumb being my current, the thumb and the middle of the index finger being this one to draw it out. I have this one going this way, and then I have that kind of going into the page, and then I have this going to the left. So that's my two spare fingers, very nice. And it looks something like this. This is my current. This can also be the V from the previous question, so it's the same thing. Uh, this is going into the page, which is my B, and I can see now that I am point pointing to the left with this finger, that's my force. I am pointing to the left, which means C would be the answer. Excellent stuff. And now over here, a current carrying wire is placed into the field. What is the direction of the magnetic force on the wire? So this is going in and up. So what I'm going to do is my thumb is going into the page. This is going up. And how am I supposed to draw this? Uh, I'm going to have my middle finger kind of crossing like that. That is horribly drawn. What is that? No, my hand doesn't. That is not a hand. Oh, my God. What the heck? All right, forget that. Um, thumb in. Middle finger, uh, index finger up, and then yeah, that's my hand. I I am so bad at drawing. How am I not getting? How can I not draw this? I give up. Um, use your hand, and you'll see that it is going to hopefully point towards the right in this case. Um, I if I have done this correctly, I hope I have. This drawing is terrible. And so the idea is this middle finger should be pointing to the right. And I'm just going to keep this hand as a testament of my inability to draw. I, I apologize, I failed you in this question, but I, I hope you understand it. Oh, look at that, the rest of these are cancelled. Oh, thank God. All right, let's move on. And that's us done. Amazing, these are answers are all given. Thank you.